Hello and welcome to another Five in Five. We're in a floodplain grassland near Clan McNoise, you can see it behind me, uh, on the Shannon Callows. These grasslands are mown in late summer, they don't receive any fertiliser and they flood in winter. Sometimes for months at a time this whole area is underwater. As a result, these plant communities are really diverse and really unusual. It's a really important area for invertebrates as well and for birds, in particular breeding birds. And of course, there's a really important cultural heritage attached to these areas as well because of the traditional mowing that's used. So this plant here, the white flower that I'm surrounded by is called Sneezeworth. And it's a close relative of yarrow. So I'm sure you'll be able to see the resemblance, but actually when you look closely, it's quite different. So it's got a smaller number of larger flowers, but very similar in color and in structure. If we take a look at the leaves, I've got some leaves of common yarrow here, very finely divided, so lots of little, little uh, individual leaflets. Whereas for a Sneezeworth, the plant we're surrounded by here, it has strappy leaves. So they're long and parallel sided with little saw-like teeth at the edge. It's not that sharp, but it does, does remind you of the edge of a saw blade. This is a plant of wet places in particular, and it's much more common in the northern part of the country than the southern half, but it's very, very common around here in the Shannon Callows. It really likes this habitat. Um, it's called Achillea tarmica, that's the, the scientific name, and tarmicus is a Greek word that means causing a sneeze. So this plant was used to treat head colds, it was used to treat phlegm, people used to make a snuff from it and it would make them sneeze and they thought this was a, was a remedy. Um, it's got a very interesting Irish name as well, it's called Lus Coroin, and Lus means just a plant or a herb, and Coroin has a very specific meaning. It's a plant of vegetation that is used, that is cut with a scythe. So this plant is very much rooted in meadows and meadow management because it's a, it, the, the Irish name means plant that's found in vegetation that's cut with a scythe, which is how our meadows would have been managed long ago. So this plant here in front of me with the beautiful purple flowers, this is Devil's Bit Scabious, Succisa pretensis. Um, so I'm in an example of what's called a millennia meadow, so a really unusual type of grassland habitat. Lots of unusual and special plants are found here. So let's get to the name of this plant, Devil's Bit Scabious. So this plant in the first year of its life has a typical taproot. So think of a carrot or, or a dandelion root. In the second year of its life, the bottom part of that root dies off and it sends out side roots, uh, lateral roots instead. And the story goes, a long, long, long time ago, the story goes that the devil was jealous of this plant because it was a cure for so many different ailments and a bit off the bottom part of the root. The second part of the name scabious, it's devil's bit scabious, relates to the fact that it's used and has been used to treat uh, conditions of the skin for a very long time. It's also a very important food plant. It flowers in late summer and so it's a really important time to have food produced for butterflies, for bees and for long-tongued flies. It's particularly important in the life cycle of the protected marsh fritillary butterfly. It's almost exclusively the food plant for the larvae of that species. So the plant that I'm surrounded with here, the cream-coloured flowers, this is Meadowsweet, Philopendula ulmaria. Um, the Irish name is Arigid Luocra. Arigid means silver in Irish, and the underside of the leaves are actually silvery in this plant. And I think it means the silver plant that grows among the rushes. Uh, this plant has kind of red furrowed stems, uh, so quite easily recognisable, also by the smell. I'm completely surrounded by the sweet smell. And it's really suggestive of a high nectar content, but there actually isn't any nectar in this plant, even though it's heavily visited by, uh, by insects and invertebrates. But it does provide a lot of pollen, so it's a great source of pollen for, for uh, our invertebrates. This plant is extremely important medicinally and herbally. So it has something in it called salicylate. Also willow trees have this, and it's the, the, the thing from which aspirin is synthesised. So this plant is, is used in all sorts of things, painkillers, uh, antiseptic, anti-inflammatory, treatment for arthritis and rheumatism. It's a hugely effective use. Because it smells so nice, it was also strewn in people's houses to create a nice smell and maybe mask uh, unpleasant odours, and apparently it was highly prized by the druids. This plant is a, an integral part of floodplain meadows. If it grows very, very tall and if it comes to dominate, it can be a signal of abandonment in the meadows as well. So this plant here in front of me with the pale pink flowers is common valerian, Valeriana officinalis. The Irish name for this plant is Querhan Currig, and Currock means marsh or bog. So it tells you something about this plant. It loves to grow in damp places and it likes to grow tall. So here we're at the edge of a trackside, just near a meadow that's mown. It's thriving at the edge of the field because it can grow tall. 
Um, quite identifiable by its tall height, its little pink flowers, and the leaves are quite distinctive in shape. A little hard to describe, but quite distinctive in shape. Um, this plant is a very important plant medicinally. It used to be called all heal. Uh, it's used for a range of things, but one of the, the key things, it it's, it's acts as a sedative. So it's been used in the treatment of insomnia, uh, of various types of neurosis, uh, but like anything, it needs to be used with a great degree of caution. Um, they like strong tea up in Donegal, and I've heard that they have used this plant to make, to make tea in that part of the country. Um, another thing about this plant, it's got quite a, an interesting smell. It's sweet, but with a little hint of something else. Apparently cats love this plant, and if they get the chance, they'll roll around in it. So do rats. And the story goes, the Pied Piper of Hamlin had dried, crushed valerian root in his pocket, and hence he was able to get the rats to follow him. So this grass here is tufted hair grass, the Shamsia cespitosa, an incredibly tall, elegant species. Uh, it's called tufted hair grass because the leaves can make a big tuft down at the base of the plant. And the leaves are very rough, full of silica, and they're very, very rough to the touch. The plant in Irish is called moan air garov. Garov means rough, and moan air means uh, grass of the peatland. But actually, it's, quite, it's, it's not only limited to peatlands, but it does thrive in... Um, poorly drained and low nutrient soil. So areas like this. Um, it's an incredibly important plant for invertebrates and there's a high number of fungi that have been found associated with this. It's a very important plant for nature. Also for birds, because of the tussocks and tufts that it forms, provide shelter for the, for the birds. Um, the seeds of this plant have been used for food by humans in, in Britain and Ireland and are still used by indigenous peoples in other parts of the world. And actually, it's a very important plant now in gardening, would you believe? So this is popping up. It's all the rage, all the fashion to have plants, to, to plant in grasses into to domestic settings. So you might see this at a garden centre near you soon.